Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 687 of the Juicebox Podcast. I'm just going to admit right now that I don't know how to describe Leanne. So Leanne has type 1 diabetes. She's an adult in her 30s, was recently diagnosed when she recorded this. And that's all I'm giving you. While you're listening, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juicebox podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. I have a buy me a coffee page. It's buymeacoffee.com forward slash juicebox podcast. And some people are members and with their membership, um, usually they're promised a reading of their uh, of their name, which if I'm being honest, I'm woefully bad at doing. But recently Donnie became a member and asked me to read you this. A shout out to Nolan and Jen Dean and everybody remembered, loved and affected by the combination of diabetes and mental illness. Thank you, Donnie, very much. And thank you, everybody who buys me a coffee. This show is sponsored today by the glucagon that my daughter carries, Gvoke Hypopen. Find out more at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. The podcast is also sponsored by U.S. Med. Are you looking for a great place to get your diabetes supplies? U.S. Med is that place. Head to usmed.com forward slash juice box right now to get your free benefits check. And if you don't like the internet, you could use your phone by calling 888-721-1514. And just before we get started, please remember to check out touchedbytype1.org and find them on Instagram and Facebook. Amazing, amazing, amazing organization doing just, well, you'll see. You'll see what they're doing for people with type 1 when you visit touchedbytype1.org. My name's Leanne. I am a unfortunate marathon runner and an accountant, former bartender, and I recently was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. You're an unfortunate marathon runner because you're bad at it? Or because no, because I just don't know how I ended up being a marathon runner. It happened accidentally. When did it happen accidentally? Um, I ran my first half marathon in 2017, and I don't know if you know this about runners, but they're a bunch of enablers. And I said I would never run a full marathon, and then two years later, I was training for a full marathon and. Ran one. Lately, it sounds like you're about to badmouth a big group of people. So that's exciting for <laughs> me. Um, enablers. What do you mean? Oh, it's yeah. You, I've, I joined a running group, and they know they're enablers. But I joined an, a running group, and I would say I love half marathons. I don't ever want to do a full. There's no reason to run 26 miles. And they're like, you can do it. And they just kind of like put little thoughts into your head, and they're like, okay. But you could run a full marathon if you really wanted to. <laughs> and so, you know, you get a whole bunch of people telling you you can do something. You're like, you know what? Maybe I'll give it a try. OK, what's their um, when I was a kid, there was this anti-drug campaign. And I can remember <laughs> one of the um, one of the sentences from the commercial was like, it'll make you feel good. It was like that. And so yes. is that what they're doing to you? Are they trying to drag you into their hell? What is happening? Yes. Yes. Why don't they just stop <laughs> running? Is it because they bought all those sneakers? What are they doing? I don't know. I tried to stop running. And then i that's how I learned that I actually really enjoyed it is because I had to stop for a while, like right after my diagnosis, while I was trying to get things under control. And I was like, wait a minute. What do you mean I can't go out and just run like I used to? Because that was scary. I've reclined my chair way back. I feel like you and I are going to have a chill conversation. I want to get in (laughs) in the right mood for this. You tried to stop running? And you couldn't? Yes. Correct. I don't think you understand. So if you just don't (laughs) run, you've stopped running. So what happened when you stopped running? I just, I went stir crazy and it was just, I didn't realize how much I actually enjoyed doing it, even though 
I only enjoy it while I'm running. The process of getting ready to go for a run is not super fun. You or sound like my about, wife. Like, oh, with, I have to go. <laughs> sound like my wife with sex. So, um, <laughs> okay. So, wait a second. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to end up leaving it in, but whatever. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, the prep for running sucks. You like the doing it. So, what do you just like the, I mean, is there some sort of like an endorphin thing that happens while you're running? Yeah. Um, I used to think that the runner's high was a myth. I think it's just, there's something about the sense of accomplishment. Like the first time I ran a half marathon, it's just like, I actually did this. Cause I'm not a super fast runner. I, I average like maybe a 12 minute mile, which my brother calls jogging. He's like, you don't run, you jog. Screw him. First of all, that's, that's I, rude yeah, to he, talk to people he, that way. Are you an addict? Be honest in other ways. Yes. <laughs> Jeez, that probably was super yes. oh, it was one of the things you're addicted to is being really honest with people what um yes. <laughs> what are what are some other things that you uh maybe do is it impulsive or compulsive or i don't know what the word is no i just i think i just really love the race atmosphere so like this past year okay. two year and a half two years has kind of sucked because you don't get the the excitement of race day and a hundred thousands of people running around you hmm. doing the same thing, having, the, and then my running group, we always go drinking after we run. <laughs> I was going to say, so. is this just another excuse for people to drink? Is that all this is? Yes, pretty much. <laughs> so you, you get to feel healthy and then get loaded for two days. Yeah. Oh, right. I, I listen, people are very predictable. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Okay, so that was in 2017. That had nothing to do with diabetes. Although, if no. you want to try to make the case that running gives people diabetes, we can go down that road, but I don't think it's true. Uh, no. So you, so you, we should probably talk more about your diabetes. I love it when I'm like 15 minutes into it. I was like, I think people want to hear about diabetes too. Um, when, when were you diagnosed? Just a year ago? Uh, January 2020. That's not No, a- 2021. Just this year. Oh, that's... January... 2021. What did you do? Like get diagnosed and immediately asked to be on the podcast? What happened? Pretty much. <laughs> like I, well, I found your podcast because I, when I was in the ER, I didn't have a room, so I didn't have a TV. So I, um, I spent my time on Reddit trying to like figure out what was going on. So I found your, like your podcast immediately. And then I had a very, I kind of go into like when I need to learn something about something new Mm -hmm. i go into the deep end like it's like all right this is my new obsession for the next two months everything is about diabetes yeah we heard you a second (laughs) you're gonna have an addictive nature before we get into that because i have a question about it can you pull that bell off that cat or whatever i'm hearing back there (laughs) yes hold on is it a bell on a cat it is a bell on a cat people Um, people listen to me closely i'm a genius well i I just spent like 20 minutes before the show stealing all their toys so they wouldn't make noise. But you didn't tell the people. You didn't tell me you had cats, right? No, I did not tell you. I, I, I don't know if the rest of you are getting this, but I might be empathic or something. Or, I don't know, whatever one of those words and is. And you that, ran away. Here. I'm sorry. I'm going to talk over while she's chasing the cat. <laughs> <laughs> run away, cat. Run. I don't care if the rest of the podcast is her chasing that cat. It's fine. Oh, are you still wearing your headphones? Sorry. <laughs> No, yeah, I have. They're, they're, the ones I, they're wireless, so I can keep you. <laughs> oh, I thought you took them off. I was bad mouthing <laughs> you to your face. I mean, not bad mouthing. I was making fun of you directly to you. I didn't mean that. No, he. well, he's a kitten, so he's hard to wrangle. I don't want to hear so. about your problems. I was trying to set up a situation <laughs> where, um, like, six months from now, you were listening to your episode, and you're like, he was talking crap about me while I was chasing that cat around. <laughs> but it didn't work out that way. Anyway. Um, I'm getting quite an ear for what's happening in people's homes from doing this podcast. All right. Yeah. I appreciate that. You didn't hurt the cat, right? No, I just shut him into a room. So <laughs> you, you couldn't catch him? No, he, he's tiny and wily. <laughs> All right. So let's get back into this. <laughs> uh, what the hell was, I know my question. I'll tell you what, I, I must've slept well last night. I'm very clear headed right now. Um, Reddit. A lot of people tell me they hear about the podcast on Reddit, but I don't go on Reddit because the idea of it scares me. Am I generally thought of well there? (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. If I'm not, I don't mean, tell it, me. Make up a lie, but because I'll never go look. So just tell me. You, you yeah. Um, well, I, what I did is I made a post on one of the type one subreddits, and I was like, I was just diagnosed. Tell me what I should ask when I go to the endocrinologist and what you wish you knew at the beginning. And the two things that came up a lot was your podcast and think like a pancreas. You don't have to bring up what else came up. That's fine. But okay. Um, <laughs> nah, that's a pretty good book from so, what I understand. I can't read, so I'm not sure. But um, I hear good things about Gary's book for certain. And Jenny's on all the time. And Jenny actually works for Gary. So um, I don't know if people know that or not, that Integrated Diabetes Services is owned by the author of Think Like a Pancreas. Um, it took me longer than I w- would like to admit to put those two together because I was listening to you and reading the book. And then like three months later, I was like, oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> well, in fairness to you, I don't really spoon feed information to people. So um, like, there's a way of communicating that I think of as more long form. And I don't just mean like over an hour and a half. I mean, like over years, like I feel like we're building a thing here together. And so I think it's weird when people come on and say obvious stuff, that's not conversational. If stuff comes out in conversation, I'm happy about that, but I don't make like short declarative, boring statements. I try not to do that. And like coming on and being like, this is Jenny. Jenny works for Gary. Gary wrote that book. You know, like I don't talk like that. So, um, but that's cool. So you went right to Reddit, where I'm generally thought of well, which thank you, Reddit. I appreciate that. <laughs> Huge shout out. I will never be there. So please don't bother th- saying you're welcome. I won't see it. <laughs> but um, and it's not for any real reason other than I mean, I don't really do social media to begin with. And I think of Reddit as social media, right? Like it's a message board. Am I right? Yeah. 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 I don't have time. I'm busy. Uh, I wish I wasn't, though. It sounds amazing. I mean, you went there and got what I'm calling rock solid information. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're in the hospital redditing. There's no word for redditing. Like you can think it is redditing. It is, is redditing. Yeah. You know, when I say editing, like if I, <laughs> all right, sorry, let's just rabbit hole for one second. Sometimes I say to people while I was editing this episode, I blah, 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 blah. And I hate that word. The word editing makes me like when I say it in context, like I'm editing the episode, I'm okay. But when I use it descriptively, oh my God, I sound crazy. I have to stop. <laughs> Never mind. Redditing it is. Um, okay. So you were redditing in the ER and heard about a podcast. You start listening to the podcast in the ER? Yes, actually, I did. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you're insane. But I love it when people do that. Um, so the doctor comes in and you're like, don't worry, you don't have to explain anything to me. I have a stranger on the internet I heard about through Reddit. He's explaining the whole thing right now. <laughs> I was a little bit in shell shock. Yeah, I bet. The, that whole period, because I, no one in my family, there's no history of diabetes in my family. And I originally went to patient first because I thought I had COVID. So okay. <laughs> to, to think that, you know, you have something that you potentially will get better from. And then they're like, oh, you should go to the ER. And I was like, mm, do I have, can I just go home and take a nap? And he's like, please go to the ER. Yeah. I'm going to call you tomorrow. <laughs> wow. So you go there. They tell you to go to the ER. You go to the ER finally. Check the Reddit thing I went- out. Am I, I getting went this home right? and took a nap. <laughs> went home and took a nap. Sorry. Um, you. What generation uh, are you in? What do they? How do they classify your age? Uh, I've been told I'm a geriatric millennial. Uh, oh my god! I don't know what any of that means. I hate the internet. Now I'm just realizing. I. I, I it's at the core of what I do. I. I hate that everything is branded. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um. Yeah. I'm in. I'm 33. So. Oh my god. I'm in my 30s. Jeez, you're old. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. You're not old. Um, <laughs> do you have a, you're not married, right? No. No. Okay. Are you like in a significant relationship or were you when you were diagnosed? Not when I wasn't diagnosed, not bleh, not when I was diagnosed, but I am now. Okay. Um. So what, I, I want to go back to the shell shocked part. Do you remember anything the doctors were saying to you in the ER? Um, n- not really. I know. So... My mom's a nurse and her good friend's a PA in, in, the, in a different ER in a different location in the state. 
And she was the one who, like, I texted her my labs after I left patient first. And she was the one who told me to go to the ER. And I was like, well, if she's saying to go, I should go. Mm -hmm. And I, by the time I got a good doctor talked to me, it was, I want to say eight or nine hours after I got into the ER and the, like the intake doctor finally got out to me. Cause I was in the, like, they had just gotten all of their, um, patients. Like it was like the rush of COVID cases right after Christmas. I see. Okay. And so I was in the lobby for 12 hours waiting for the doctor to get back to me. Like when I first went in, he's like, I want to put you on an IV drip and rerun these labs. It took them two hours just to put me on the IV drip. And then like another four hours and the doctor came out and talked to me. He's like, we want to keep you here. And I was like, like here in the lobby. Yeah, like, he's like, no, well, <laughs> how long do I have to sit out here with all the COVID people? <laughs> just tell me that and he's part. Like, he's like, yeah. he was like, well, we'll take you into the back. You know, he's like, well, he's like, I can't guarantee you'll have a room, but you won't be out here anymore. And I was like, okay. And then he very casually was like, you're going to keep an eye on your labs. Your, your pH is a little off. He's like, if it, if it changes any at all, we're going to have to take you to the ICU. And I was just like, okay, hmm. like that's a very casual way of saying that. Yeah. You know, and I think it sucks. One of the, like, I have a personal story about this that I'm not ready to tell yet, but having to send somebody into the emergency room during COVID was really terrible, especially if they're overwhelmed, you know, or older or something like that. Like, it's just... You need somebody there who's not going through a health crisis to help you listen to what's being said, I, I think. Like, I, I think that yeah. sucks. You know what I mean? Because, like you said, it's like he's like just like, oh, you know, and then we'll send you to the ICU. And, and all you're probably thinking is, ICU, I've heard those words on Grey's Anatomy. They sound bad. When you have diabetes and use insulin... Low blood sugar can happen when you don't expect it. Givoke Hypopen is a ready-to-use glucagon option that can treat very low blood sugar in adults and kids with diabetes ages 2 and above. Find out more. Go to givoglucagon.com forward slash juice box. Givoke shouldn't be used in patients with pheochromocytoma or insulinoma. Visit givoglucagon.com slash risk. If receiving your diabetes supplies is a constant headache, just know that it doesn't have to be. You could be using US Med. US Med prides themselves on the white glove treatment that they'll be offering to you. They carry everything from insulin pumps and diabetes testing supplies to the latest in CGMs like Libre 2 and the Dexcom G6. US Med accepts Medicare nationwide and over 800 private insurers. Better service and better care is what U.S. Med wants to give you. Head over to usmed.com forward slash juice box to get your free benefits check. Or you can call 888-721-1514. U.S. Med has served over 1 million diabetes customers since 1996, and they'd love to add you to that list. So if you'd like to get 90 days worth of supplies and fast free shipping without all the headaches, check out U.S. Med. There are links in the show notes of the podcast player you're listening in right now and links at juiceboxpodcast.com to Givo Hypopen, US Med, and all of the sponsors. Are you a US resident who has type 1 diabetes or is the caregiver of someone with type 1? If you are, please take just a few minutes to go to t1dexchange.org forward slash juicebox and fill out the survey. When you do this, you'll be helping people with type 1 diabetes and supporting the show. The survey is 100% HIPAA compliant, completely anonymous, and takes hardly any time at all. I completed it in fewer than 10 minutes, right from my iPhone. t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. <laughs> you know, like, it's, right. what, what does that mean exactly? Um, at this point, do you have any idea what's actually wrong with you or they're just looking at your labs and it doesn't look, um, right? well, the, 
the um the patient first doctor mentioned diabetes and metabolic acidosis in a sentence when I was there, but both of those words went out my head the second I left patient first. Mm -hmm. So at this point, the, the, um, this, the intake doctor, he did say he, we suspect that you have acute onset diabetes. And I'm just sitting here like, I don't even know what that means, what that means. Like, I do think I was far enough ahead in just general life of knowing like, there's diabetes and there's two types and it has nothing to do with eating sugar or not eating sugar or your diet. Like that's about what you knew. That's about what I knew. Okay. I didn't. So when did they get you out of chairs? Are you vaping? Um, by the they way? got Hold me out of chairs. Lee, are you vaping? What is that noise? I'm no. Hearing? All right. Okay. That's fine. Oh, uh, I have my hand. My hands are near my face, which you're not supposed to do during COVID, but you know, <laughs> don't worry about that. Are you, are you by yourself? Yeah. I don't think you can give yourself COVID. <laughs> no, but you're not supposed to touch your face. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not picking my nose right now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, or if I wasn't, I mean, how would you know? Okay, so, so, yeah, go ahead. They got me into a room in at midnight and I got, so that's 12 hours after I arrived at the hospital. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus. And then they, you know, take blood and all that stuff. around. 4 a.m. a nurse comes in and offers, she's like, we have a room, but you have to transfer to this other hospital. And I was like, I, <laughs> I have say- a room. I'm in a room. Yeah. I don't, my car is here because I drove myself to the ER because I, again, had no comprehension of like how bad things were at mm-hmm. the time. Sure. And, and I was like, no, I'm just, I'm in bed. I'm asleep. So I declined the room, not knowing, I saw on the news later that like, Every hospital, like south of the river, had no rooms left the night that I was admitted. Like, no rooms in the hospital. So, like, I just passed up a golden opportunity to have like an actual room, not in the ER. Oh, okay, yeah. So you're now you're living in the ER. Now I'm living in the ER. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough that the um, nurse practitioner came in in the morning. And when I still had the room to kind of explain my diagnosis and she just kind of went through it. She was great. She went through it. I don't remember any of the exact words she said. I just remember nodding my head and um, I'm a runner. So I have like, I always have like emergency information on my watch that I wear. So like the first question I asked her, I looked at it and I pointed at my road ID and I was like, oh, I guess I'll have to update this then. She's like, Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Do you have any questions about diabetes? And I was like, I don't even know what to ask you right now. Do you have any idea what your blood sugar was? Um, so when I went to patient first, my blood sugar was 256. Mm -hmm. But the last time I had eaten, that was that was a Monday morning, and the last time I had eaten was Saturday around four o'clock. Oh, okay. And my A1C was 13 and a half. Mm. 13.5. Mm. So, um, and I was in the, and I was there all by myself because I was an adult. So I couldn't have any family come in. We are all evidence to the contrary, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> You had grown to an older age, but I mean, I don't know. (laughs) Not an adult. Did you call Um, anyone in your family or someone like to tell them what was going on? Yeah, I I called my mom when I left patient first. Like I talked to her a lot, like very frequently along the way again, because uh, she's a nurse. Um, My dad, I didn't call him until they told me they were admitting me to the hospital. (laughs) I was like, well, I guess I should call him now. (laughs) Um, Because while they live close by, they couldn't do anything. Um, My mom did come up to my house and like bring me a change of clothes. And then like she stayed at my house and cleaned it, which was really nice. (laughs) That's what parents do. (laughs) They're like, I'll I'll make something easier. Or how bad is your house? Was it really dirty? It wasn't really it wasn't, it's not super dirty. It's just like, I don't do maintenance cleaning. Like, <laughs> what does that mean? So she, are there like, cups stuck to things? What are we talking about? Or like, 
Oh, the toilet. I don't think I, hear what you're saying. I don't think my bathroom looks dirty, but she would come in and like scrub the grout and like All right. Can she she pe- really like she like cleaned it, cleaned it. And I, I was you. like, oh, thanks. You mentioned First a river. Bathroom. Are you in Ohio, Chicago, something like that? Um Virginia, Richmond. Oh, okay. So there's a river there? Mm-hmm. I only know like two other rivers. Obviously, there's probably more than two, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I Rio Grande. I might know more. Let's not do that now. Um, so, it, but no, I call I, I that, call my mom. She was on speakerphone while I talked to like the nurses and in the nurse practitioner, and she asked questions. I think she was on she was on her best behavior, and I really appreciated that. Hmm. So, so, your mom was trying to pick out information too. At what point do you think you solidly understood what was going on? Like, how far from sitting in chairs in the ER until you were like, I have diabetes. I have to take insulin. There's going to be meters and testing. Like, how long were you there till you got to that? Um, I don't, honestly, I don't think I really comprehended what this was all going to be until like a month after I got home because it was just like, I, so when I was, little I was supposed to take um shots every day like growth hormone shots for okay. like a completely unrelated thing and I didn't do it because I didn't like shots so the I knew enough about diabetes that I was supposed to give myself insulin I talked to the doctor and I was like I hate shots I can't do needles like I don't know if I'll be able to give myself shots and she just looked at me and she's like well you're going to have to and I was like cool I guess this is my life now uh-huh. but while in the ho- I was in the hospital for two days, I never pricked my own finger, and I only ever gave myself two shots the whole time. Like the nurses did it for me; they were too like too busy to wa- hold my hand and walk me through it. And and then I think when they told me that they were sending me home, that's when I that was the first time I cried because she just looked at I was like, "You just want me to go to CVS and pick up this stuff and." go forth and be diabetic and please don't die. Like <laughs> Leah, are you trying to name the episode go forth and be diabetic? <laughs> Maybe. I think you just did. Cause I only had cat nap up until now because of the kitten with the bell <laughs> and that you took a nap after you left the urgent care. Um, yeah, yours is better. Oh my God. Well, that's not, can I, I, yeah. uh, hold on. Let me just stumble over seven words. <laughs> Um, sorry. I wanted so badly when the doctor, like when you realized you had to take the shots for you to say, do you see that I'm four feet, 10 inches tall? Do you know why that is? <laughs> it's because I didn't want to take growth. Uh, see, my brain would have worked backwards. I would have been like, damn it. I should have taken the growth stuff because I have to do these shots anyway. I would have been like, oh, I messed up. Are you, um, short in stature? I'm, I'm not, I'm pretty average five, six. So I don't Honestly, I don't even know what happened with that. I think they made a mistake, and I didn't need to take those shots after all because it's a miracle I'm as tall as I am. Wow. So there was a time in your life where people were like, you have to give her this drug so she grows to a normal size, and now you're 5'6"? Yeah. Huh. How? how that would have been like 30 years ago? How long ago? I, yeah, I think I was like eight or nine like I was old enough that my parents thought I was capable of taking shots on my own and didn't pay attention to it but not old enough to actually be responsible enough to do it I'm just fascinated that a doctor said you had to do something and then it didn't happen to be net or do you think you'd be like 12 feet tall now if you did that or like is everyone in your family tall yeah, we're all about like the average height of like me and my brother are the same height. Mm, that's not an average so. height for a guy though, five six. Well, he might be taller than me. I don't know. You don't know. Don't that's much okay. attention. All right, I, I'm just I, I'm just fascinated that like at some point in your life, someone said like we're gonna pump this kid full of this whatever this <laughs> is, and then you were like nah, and they're like all right, don't worry about it. Like I don't I don't know like that, none of that makes sense to me. It'd be like if someone said to you, hey, you need insulin or you're gonna die, and you went, I'm not doing it, and they went, okay. I just I, I don't get the like how easy they gave up part for some reason. I well, it was more of like my mom. So around that time, my mom was in nursing school, and my dad was in the military. So it was probably more something along the lines of, "Did you take your shot today?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, I did it." And they'd be like, "Okay, cool." And then 
we moved on. Leah, you're a little liar when you're a kid. You were just just lying to them. What were you doing with the injections after not taking them? Just not- well, they were. It was. It was kind of like insulin, where oh, you had to pull it up in a syringe. So they wouldn't. Hmm. I don't know. All right. I don't know. They just didn't notice. I think your mom. I think your mom could have tried harder. Don't let her. Don't let her listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it doesn't seem like it was necessary. All right. I, all right. Now I'm past all that. Um, we're in the hospital. Do you think how much of the haphazard way that this happened? Do you think was COVID? I don't. There's no way for you to know, huh? Yeah. I mean, I kind of. I kind of suspect if it was related it would be like i had it asymptomatically oh i'm sorry you misunderstood me i meant oh. i meant like covid meaning the hospital was like crazy and you weren't maybe oh. getting like clear direction i'm sorry all of it oh because <laughs> okay. they did they did send um a diabetic educator to come talk to me while i was in the hospital and i was in the hallway and it was it's kind of adorable how confused she was i must have been her first patient to um that she had to talk to because like she'll come she came and she sat a chair next to my bed and she's showing me like the different type like the vial she went through like the the blood meters and the vials and the pins and how they worked but at first she was like really fumbling she's like usually there's a bedside table for me to put these things on and I was like I I don't know what to tell you (laughs) and I would have been like (laughs) hey adjust would you (laughs) I have diabetes she was very (laughs) <laughs> she was very nice. She went through all the things. And then while she was talking to me, they brought my um they brought my lunch by and they kind of put it on the nurse's station. And so when she was getting ready to leave, she's like, okay, well, I'll let you, you know, go and eat your lunch. I'm gonna come back and talk to you again tomorrow. You seem very confu- overwhelmed. I was like, I am very overwhelmed. I might not have paid attention. Like I would have but been like, she's looking around. listen, you're casting aspersions. You couldn't explain a blood glucose meter to me without a table. Those two things have nothing to do with each other. So and she's, uh, yeah. she's looking around and like, I, again, I don't have this. Table, so she just kind of looks up at the nurse and she's like, are the patients, she's just supposed to like eat on her bed. And the nurse looked up at her and she goes, yeah, like, and I feel bad because at this point, the only thing that I feel wrong is like I have a headache and I'm just sitting here in a hospital bed, like watching everyone like run around. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm like the probably most low key patient. And I'm just like, it's fine. I'm here. Did you get <laughs> what insulin am I for that do? meal? Did you get insulin for that meal? Um, I think so. Okay. So the inference was, look, there's no table here. There's nothing I can do about it. Because it's COVID time, and I don't know where the hell the tables are, and I'm busy, and leave me alone, and eat your food. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't ask. I was fine. I was like, I sit on my couch and eat without a table. I feel like a table is not a requirement for eating, but... (laughs) You're a low expectation having girl. Uh, (laughs) I mean, so you just balanced your tray on your knees and ate in a hospital bed? Um, I, I sat crisscross applesauce with the, the tray sitting in front of me. It was, <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever said those words on this podcast. <laughs> um, well, there you go. You are, you are, you're, I guess you don't, you don't have a lot of needs. Um, right, how long are you in the hospital for? Um, about 36 hours. I left Wednesday at noon ish. Mm-hmm. And then, you, um, and then you went forth. And then um, I went forth. How did that go? Like, did you literally go to a, a a pharmacy and buy gear and go home? Yeah, they the the doctor sent a prescription to the pharmacy, and I went and picked it up. And that um, she did a great job. She did get me in with an endocrinologist, like like the next week. So she she because like they didn't. I didn't understand what was going on, but she said they had a hard time getting endocrinologists to come to this particular hospital. And I was like, so I didn't talk to an endo Mm -hmm. while I was in the hospital. Just nurses? So I didn't. And diabetes educators? I I, I talked to a diabetes educator Mm -hmm. and she did come back and talk to me the next day before I left, which was really nice. Was it helpful or Um, just nice? It was, it was helpful. Like they, they were very, like 
honestly was the best worst experience. Like every, every nurse I encountered and every professional I encountered in the hospital was very nice. Like they would have had every right to be rude and angry and wait, why, just wait, hold on a second. I, I, so you just said something that a lot of people say that I have to be honest, flummoxes me every time. Um, they were very nice or I love my endo. Like there's people all the time with like eight A1Cs who are like, listen, don't get me wrong. I love my endo. And I'm like, well, your endo is supposed to be helping with your diabetes, your A1Cs and the AIDS. Why do you love your endo? It would be like if I took my car to get repaired and it came back without wheels on it. But the guy told a great story while I was there. And I was like, I love my mechanic. Like, why do we like, I don't, do you know what I'm saying? Like, why does that? I it's, I want people to be kind and a bedside manner is important. But why do we so easily write off people with poor information or poor communication skills because they're nice otherwise? I do. Am I being cr- crotchety? I get what you're. I get what you're saying. Go ahead. Um, everyone at the hospital did a great job of communicating with me. Like I, I think the nurses did a great job. I think the diabetes educator did it. Like, but you didn't understand I, what was happening, though. I. You said you described yourself I as did, I did. I think I, on a logical level, I understood what was happening. I didn't comprehend what it would mean for my life yet. Okay. Like, but could you take care um, of yourself when you got home? Could you give yourself insulin for a meal, test your blood sugar? Did you know what you were supposed to be doing and what your goals I, I were? did know that. Like, they they did walk me through that. Okay. And I I I mastered insulin shots. That was um the, the one of the two shots I gave myself when I was at the hospital was, um, with one of the, um, evening nurses, like the overnight nurses. And she used to work on a pediatrics floor. So she's like, I'm going to have you give yourself your insulin. Mm -hmm. And she handed me the syringe and I got very nervous and anxious about it. So I was like, you know what? I can't do it. I went to give it back to her and she just put her hand on mine and made me do it, which was like, everything I needed because I realized, Oh, it, it does not hurt. Like yeah. this, this little tiny needle does not hurt. I can do this. Everything is fine. Someone to be parental with you for a minute and, and guide you. Through yeah. Something. Right. Gotcha. But I like, I listening to your stories and just like the amount of time people have spent in the hospital and like a lot more handholding that has happened. I think I would have gotten that if I actually was not in the, emergency room and I was actually like up on a floor sure. or, you know, with nurses who that was their, like, that's what they were used to where all of the nurses I was dealing with were used to putting out fires and mm-hmm. like literally preventing people from dying. And okay. I'm, well, they were preventing me from dying too, but people were retasked I'm, <laughs> and doing jobs that you think they didn't normally do. Yeah. I got you. And they, they, they were great. It was just more of like, um, the issue I had when I got home was the finger pricking with the, I have an anxiety about like pushing a button that I know is going to launch a needle into my skin. <laughs> like, do I, you? Can't, I can't, I can't do it. Like I, there was like one of the times I actually had to, uh, I ruined, I was so mad. Cause I, I, it took me so long to prick my finger that my glucose meter turned off and I didn't realize it did that. So I had put the blood on the test strip and then it didn't work. And I was like, oh man, I have to get, like, I have to do this all over again. <laughs> you know, that happens a lot to people. <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it times out and you're like, Bruh. and then now you're balancing the blood on your finger and trying to pull the, the, the strip out and let it reset and push it back in again. But I'm saying, I hear what you're saying. You went to the blood when it wasn't reading it. Oh, yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. Look at your life is terrible. Look at all these problems you have. <laughs> Just awful. Well, things are better now, right? Yeah. No, I um everything's good now. I think I have a pretty decent control. I'm already on I was blessed that I'm like on the Tesla of insurance plans cuz like, they don't take gas. My insurance pays for everything. Oh, okay. So, um like my insurance has this program. Like if I participate in like coaching, what's the three requirements? If I do like the quarterly coaching, I take my medicine as prescribed and I get my A1C tested once a year. They cover all of my, they cover all of my diabetes supplies. 
Hmm. before I hit my deductible. Oh, that's cool. So, and then this, this recent year, uh, Dexcom switched to pharmacy. So that counts as a diabetic supply, which now saves makes me Dexcom. a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Free, free for you. So though, like basically insulin. So that's great. Yeah. Um, I did have like the endo that they set up the appointment with that I got to like, which I learned is amazing that I got in with an endocrinologist like a week after diagnosis, mm -hmm. but I did not like her. And please tell me. So why. I get what. You, well, I went in, and again, I had to go alone because you couldn't take people in. Um, and yeah. she like the first thing she does is the the sugar is poison lecture, of and like told me all of the terrible things that could possibly happen to me now that I'm diabetic, which granted, I feel that I need to know, but I don't think that should be the like opening act of the play of like, Oh, you can go blind. You can lose your feet. You can have your higher risk for stroke and heart attack. And I'm like, Oh, great. Thanks. You think they should sing the song first? <laughs> not, not, not go right into mama fell down the well. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so then she goes, you know, so we were talking, um, I, I asked her cause she, she was a big proponent of, um, the low carb diet. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, I'm a runner. I eat a lot of carbs. Like how, like I train for marathons. Like how is that going to matter? She's like, well, when do you, when are you running a marathon? I was like, well, I think I have, I have one planned for the end of May. She's like, Oh, that's too soon. You're not going to be able to run that. I was like, Oh, okay. And then she wanted to put me on a pump. She's like a pumps for you. I'm going to send in someone to talk to you about it. And then that she immediately sends like, this is my first day, all this information that she's like, I'm going to put you on a pump. Hmm. And I'm going to talk about your, your favorite company. And so she sends in the Medtronic rep to talk to me about like their system and like went back when I was on Reddit and doing my research, the number one pe thing that people said is like, get a Dexcom or a CGM. So that's what I cared about. I, I, at this point had managed doing shots just fine. Yeah. I felt like I could continue to do that. But the thing that I really wanted to get rid of was pricking my fingers. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I want a CGM. So I'm talking to this guy and I was like, okay, well, I want the Dexcom CGM. And he's like, oh, well, we, our system is super great because it's like an all-in-one system. And Did she sent you a I company don't know, rep like, in? Yes. So there's like a sales guy in a closet she opened up and let out or something like that? Yeah. Uh, apparently, like, hmm. he, like, he uses her office as his office. Like, like th that was like one of the selling points is like you have – people here to help you on site. We're here every week. You know, I'm here every Tuesday to like oh, help with everything you need. Okay. And like they did the diabetes education for her and all the stuff. So like he assures me that there are three choices for pump. Like, well, actually he didn't even tell me that I only knew, I knew that from listening to your podcast, but he's like, he he sold it as everything is created equal. Like, you know, yeah, you have choices, but in the grand scheme of things, everything's about the same. Hmm. And so I, because I'm sitting here, I'm like, well, I want the CGM. I want to get back to running because I didn't feel safe running without being able to check my blood sugars constantly because okay. I'm so new to insulin and I was, you know, I don't want to go low when I'm out running, especially since I run like, four to five miles at minimum at a time. Just so I get slowly. pretty far from my house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just very slowly get far from your house. Um, yeah. Did you feel like you got pushed into it? Um, or not. In I the don't want to say uh, not at the moment. It was afterwards that I looked back on it and I was like, you know, that was kind of like an aggressive sales tactic. Mm -hmm. Not even that, but it's like, so I agreed to it because I was like, well, this is my chance. You know, if, yeah. if this is as good as everything else, why not 
you know, I know that some people wait three to six to year to get on pumps. I'm getting it a week after diagnosis. Why won't, why not jump on this? I see. Uh, So you were just sort of, you were online where people were saying, I'd get a Dexcom if I was you. And then somebody's saying, well, here's another CGM. It's just as good. And it comes with a pump. It's a whole system. I'm here to support it. And you're like, all right, well, it's happening quickly. I hear other people saying six months, a year, uh, burn the hand. And you're like, I'll take it. Right. Okay. And, and, and the guy, he was super nice. He was, he was type one. He'd been type one his whole life. He was just showing it to me. And at this point I had no idea what, T Slim look T Slim look like. I had no idea what Omnipod looked like. Mm-hmm. I just saw this and I was like, oh, if this is the technology, let's go. And so they like overnighted it to me. I got it. They got me into pump training. Like I was like two days later, and they were gonna put me on the pump first. And I was like, I care more about the CGM. Can I because they break it up? They're like, it's too much to learn in one session. So they only teach you one at a time. So I was like, can I get put on the CGM first? Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. And they were fine with that. They put me on the CGM and it was, it was terrible. <laughs> like it was not like the only thing that I liked better on that was like it had a reusable inserter, but like you had to calibrate it twice a day, 12 hours apart. So but they also tell you to calibrate it when your blood sugars are steady. And I'm like, well, if so, if I calibrate it at 6 a.m. when I first wake up, then I have to calibrate again at 6 p.m., but I usually eat dinner at 5, so my blood sugars aren't going to be steady. And if it gets wonky, it'll, like, wake up in the middle of the night and be like, you need to calibrate me. And if you don't calibrate it, it doesn't do readings, and it wouldn't uh. – Lee, I like, think this is the part where I go, hey, Medtronic, sorry, I don't ask people what pumps they use before they come on the podcast, and I don't control what they say about your stuff. Is that about the point where I say this? I think it is. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, ugh. I... Do you still have it now? No. Okay. I don't. That <laughs> I, um, I mean, it's only been like eight months since you got it. You don't have it anymore? <laughs> so, I... Jeez. I'm freaking out about this because I go online, I'm doing research and I'm stressed because I'm like, yeah. this is, this is terrible. Like I can't like, this is supposed to reduce this. And that I, I, I made a post on your Facebook page and people came out of the woodwork to be super supportive. And they're like, you have 30 days. Yes. They sent it to you. Yes. You've tried it on, but you have 30 days to say you don't want it anymore. And I was like, Oh, you returned it like a sweater. I, I returned it and the return process was atrocious, but like I took my, like the next appointment, I took my mom with me. I had, I had found a different endo just to, like, cause like, even if this, I, I didn't like the lady, I didn't like the, the co-op, the, the group the way she, she ran things. And I just knew it wasn't going to be a good fit. So I had already set up an appointment with a new endo, but she couldn't see me for another month. So when I went to my follow-up appointment, I, you know, met with the physician's assistant and I told her, I was like, look, I don't want this system. I don't think it's going to work for me. I want to get the Dexcom and then I want to like research my options between the tandem and the Omnipod. Cause at this point I had find, found some other runners in the area who were type one dogmatic. I met other people. I've just been having conversations about, you know, what life was like. And I, I already called my insurance. They said, we don't have a particular pump that we cover. Like if you want the T you want tandem, we'll cover it. You want Omnipod, we'll cover it. Like it is your choice. It's like, well, if I'm not being forced into this, I don't want this. Mm -hmm. So I went and I told her, and then she kind of looked at me and she's like, oh, well, Dr. So-and-so only works, exclusively works with Medtronic. And I was like, what? (laughs) And then there was just like this really awkward pause and silence between us. And I was like, well, I, full disclosure, I have an appointment with another endo. She's like, okay, well, I can't tell you what to do. You know, it's your, it's your care. Mm -hmm. So like without so many words that I was basically told, like, if you see this doctor, you have to use the Medtronic pump. 
And I was like, I, I'm i not doing that. No so, kidding. I, <laughs> I wonder how much, setting aside Medtronic for a second, I wonder how much that happens. Like, I, I mean, it felt like a little like mob thing, right? Like, hey, you come yeah. here, you eat dinner, you pay for this, you do that, you do what I tell you. Like that kind of thing. Like, uh, don't say anything, use the pump, shut up or you leave. Um, yeah. Ooh, that's unpleasant. Oh, yeah. And then like, they were super helpful for getting me off, like on the pump. But the second I was like, I, I don't want this. They, the med, like, it was just. Are you not at, at that practice to- anymore? No, I am at a completely different practice. And my new endo Good. is, is um, I don't know if she's great, but she, she listens to me and she, I kind of go in and she's like, oh, your numbers are amazing. Like, do you even, she's like, do you need anything from me? And I was like, I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of just, so she'll adjust things. So she encourages, she says I can run. She, she supports me in what, and you know wanting to keep tighter ranges so you have the gear you want now what pump did you end up i have the gear i want yeah what'd you end up with but um i have um tandem i have the t-slim with the dexcom are you using the control iq i am how do you like that i i like it okay um I kind of just default to it right now because I'm still trying to like get a hold of like carb ratios and and all of that. Um, I I really wish that they would let me set my target lower Mm -hmm. because it right now it just, it defaults at like the target of 110. And I was like, can I have my target at 100? So like to kind of get around it for now, right? It it, it is. Um, they tandem called me and they did a survey once. And one of the guys, he was asking the question. I told him that. And he's like, we hear that a lot. And there he's like, there's works behind the scenes. Like he, he, he made it sound like tandem is aware. They're hoping that that's something, a possibility in the future. Okay. So, good. um, sorry, you were about to say, but, something. I forget. I cut you off. Oh, the returning of the, Medtronic yeah, how did, I had that, to, how did that go? So I had to cancel my second um, training appointment, appointment right. pump, pump, pump appointment. And I am very um, confrontation averse. Like it gives me a lot of anxiety. So I did not want to call this lady and tell her that I had to cancel. So I, I called her. And she didn't answer. So I left her a message. I was like, I have to cancel the appointment. And she calls me back and she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. She's like, when can we reschedule? And I was like, well, actually, I'm I'm going to. Oh, what am I? Your pump sounds like sorry. it's going to self-destruct. Is yeah, that what that is? I'm wondering what... Oh, what's wrong? This is my insulin stopped. It stopped? I started it. Yeah. That's weird. I don't know about that. Cause I don't, I've never used sometimes, it. Sometimes, um, I think it, sometimes it, de- it detects occlusions that aren't occlusions. So oh. it'll stop the insulin and I just, it yells at you and then I check it and everything's, I make sure there's no kinks in my tubes and yeah, restart I don't, it. Yeah. There's because of no tubing on Omnipod. Like I'm not familiar with those kinds of like pump issues, but, um, um, it's okay. So you're okay. Yeah, it's good. I'm right. good. So this lady, I tell her, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm switching from Medtronic. I'm going to, I'm, I would like something different. (laughs) I'm going to anything else. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and I just, she, well, she's like, well, can you tell me, can you tell me why you're switching? And I was like, well, I don't, I don't like all the calibrations. Um, a lot of people had told, I, you couldn't like link it up to sugar mate or anything like that. The data was very locked down. So mm-hmm. you could only view it on their reports, right? Which you could only view on a computer, which I did not have a personal computer at that point. Cause I was like, I, I have my phone and I have my work computer. Like you don't. Yeah. And I was like, it's the, the data's locked down. It's just, it's not going to work for me. 
And and then she kind of, I guess she had access to my graph. So she pulled it up and she's like, oh, I see that you're not calibrating at the most ideal times. You really need to calibrate when your when your sugars are level. And I'm like, I've been diabetic for two weeks. My sugars are not going to be level. Like, right. give me <clears throat> give me a chance. And well, so was she, she just kept selling, going on. Was she selling to you at that point? Do you think she was trying to talk you out of it? Yeah, I, I do okay. because like she's like, oh, well, you know, our 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 apps aren't as an aesthetic. Like she, she thought I was talking about the aesthetics of the app, that they've more focused on their algorithm. And that's what they had to sell was their algorithm was the best algorithm and all of this. And I was like, it's it's not about that. And I was like, I, you know, and it's like you've been, and she was, when she was setting me up, I was like, you've been super helpful. It's not personal. I, I, this just isn't the pump for me. Mm-hmm. And, and, and she goes, well, you know, I do, I do take it a little bit personally. Oh, and at that I, point, I would have been like, lady, listen, can, let me leave this out. I've been like, Go fuck yourself. All right. Cause we're getting off this right. call now and I'm sending this shit back to you right now. Let's stop talking. I don't know what you think you're doing. Oh, I would have been like out of my mind. I love oh, being confrontational. I, I would have, I would have had a great time. And then she's like, well, there's a process. You're probably going to have to talk to the, you know, the rep that he's going to touch base and you're going to, he'll probably want to know why you're sending it back. I'm like, do I have to tell another person? So I would have been like, I'm going to leave it on the front step of my house. You should come get it. Goodbye. Right. (laughs) And so then I call, so I call Medtronic to initiate the return process because I have to call the 1-800 member to do that. Fair enough. And I go through the whole thing. I have to explain to this person why I don't want it. And they go, okay. And they put me on hold and they're like, okay, I've, I've put in the request for a return. Someone will get back to you in 10 to 14 business days. <laughs> okay. And I was like, Okay. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, and and that person was going to tell me what the next steps were. (laughs) And these, I, I gotta be honest. I I feel badly saying this, but that seems like, um, they slow walk it so that hopefully you'll give up and just, it it gets better. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what they do. Mm -hmm. Cause like I, a week later I called to check in and I was like, what, what's the next step? And, and, I, cause I'm back to finger pricks at this point until, cause my insurance won't cover Dexcom until I stop this system this. Yeah. drops off my insurance because they've in their mind, they've already covered one. Right. And so the guy's looking at it and, and he's like, Oh, I was like, I just need a shipping label. Like send, give me a shipping label so I can ship this back to you. And he puts me on hold the key for anyone in the future, the key words are, is there any way we can expedite this? Because yeah. that's what I had to say every step of the way. So he's, he could talk. He's like, okay, I put in a request to expedite this. Someone will call you back in 24 to 48 hours. And I was like, I just want a shipping label. Like <laughs> I'll pay for it myself at this point. Like just, <laughs> so someone called me back. And she asked me, she's like, oh, I have a shipping label. Do you want us to um, mail it to you or do you want it emailed? (laughs) No. (laughs) Staple it to a telephone pole and I'll come find it. Like, give me the damn thing right now. What are we doing? Uh, (laughs) Well, you stuck to it and you said you don't like confrontation, but you found your you found your nerve. Right. And you took care of it. Yeah. Yeah. These I, I I have a desk job. I work for the government. I have a lot of time on my hands to sit on hold while I'm working. <laughs> so I, it took eight weeks from the time that I requested to return the pump to get it back to them for them to acknowledge that they received it. And for them to um, tell my insurance that they no longer had a claim. And Actually, what ended up happening is I called my insurance and they were like, they were phenomenal. They did a a conference call to call Medtronic. And eventually the lady was just like, I don't understand how this process works because she's like, it's just a request. It's an email. It's not like you can, you have to mail things anymore. Yeah. 
and like so when they put us on hold she told me she's like i heard them say that they have received the pump back and that they're what they are processing the check to return the money to us she's like you don't have to wait for this so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna reverse the claims on our end so she reversed out the claims so they were no longer on my insurance so i then could proceed to get the dexcom the dexcom in the tandem Mm -hmm. And start going and and start with that, which so, so I was I, wanna, I had that like March. I want to tell you something. Easter. So I joke a lot about like like I'm talking to Medtronic. Like I always just assume somebody from Medtronic is listening, and that might sound pompous to some of you, but you know, podcast pretty big. A lot of people listen to it. It's a fair assumption. Um, I recently became aware that they do listen to the podcast, so I hope that. Um, <laughs> I really hope they heard what you said just now. Like, I mean, you told, was, you told the story yeah. well. It's arduous. Nobody should have to deal with that. If, you know, if if they don't like your product, then fair enough. Like, what do you, like, why is this how they have to get out of it? And and not for nothing, but I mean, if I'm giving advice, you know, make a better one, which I think they're on their way to trying to do, honestly. So, you know, do something to get, it, when people get it, they want to keep it. Seems reasonable. And honestly, it wasn't. If I if my choice was MDI and finger sticks and Medtronic, I would I would one hundred percent med pick that Medtronic pump. Like it wasn't it wasn't terrible. It wasn't the worst thing in the world. But for me personally, having the options, like I was I was bitter because I was never presented the options before I made the choice. Yeah, and I don't no like the way it started and... either. Like it's, and I don't like, know. Listen, I don't want to put that on Medtronic. The the idea. No, that, no, no. That was yeah. It, it, it could have been the doc. Them. It could have been the doctor's office. Like honestly, um, it the, was yeah. Yeah, the way they um, do business. When my new endo referred me to the the tan um the tandem rep, and she was talking to me, she it, we, were, we were going back and forth. She was giving me information, and she's like, "Oh, was your previous endo so and so?" And I was like. Yeah. Like, and I thought she had like a chart or something. And she's like, yeah, she's, she's the only endo in the, in the, um, in the region that won't even take an appointment with me. Oh, okay. So, so this, this endo, I think she knows Medtronic and that's what she likes. And that like, I, yeah, I, I get, I mean, hey, if I was Medtronic, I, w- I wouldn't want to be hooked to a lady who's, you know, <laughs> getting you on day one and being like, I mean, first of all, the sugar's poison thing. I mean, look, sugar's not good for you. I'm not making that argument, but it's a weird place to start, like you said in the conversation, like with try to scare tactics, and then to say, look, this is the pump that I use here. Uh, so much so that watch this next to my broom in this closet. Here's Jim. <laughs> Jim's going to tell you about Medtronic pumps. I'm like, wow, that's freaking weird. That seems like a 60s horror movie to me. You know what I mean? Like you walk in the door and you yeah. turn. There's suddenly somebody standing there. Um, the whole thing just seems ill-conceived and you know what i mean like if you want to if you want people to use your product make a product they want to use and and not for nothing i understand they made this thing and now they have to support it right like it, it exists now they can't just pretend it doesn't need to be calibrated at an optimum time like the lady said she can't just not say that but in the meantime it's weird when it turns into a business thing like well we don't want to lose right. a user because maybe I don't know, maybe six months from now they're going to come out with a, uh, you know, another seven. Like, what is it, six seventy G now? Like maybe there's a seven seventy G coming. I don't know. I really should pay more attention to things. But maybe there's something like that coming out, and they could say to you, "Look, I know this is an optimal, but at this point we're going to have upgrades, and we can." I don't know what they could do, but this doesn't seem like a great idea. The way this went for you is shitty. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was very hard and it was like, it was just like, and that's about when I emailed you when I was in the middle of returning this pump Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I, and I, and that's why I felt so passionate about it because up until, up until this point, I was a, a, a very healthy person. Like I, I did not comprehend like what a chronic illness was. I never like I hardly ever missed work like the only times like when I was bartending and stuff I never called out sick the entire like for like a decade because I just yeah I was a healthy person so to do to be on this 180 of like 
And the weird thing is, is I still, oh, here's the train. We got um, a train. You promised me a train an hour ago and we finally got one. <laughs> um, it's going to get louder before it gets quieter. Oh, it's Amtrak. So it's a quick one. He's gone. Okay. <laughs> um, he like, I still felt healthy going up until my diagnosis, mm -hmm. like up until the day before, because fun fact, all of the symptoms of like the warning signs of diabetes can be confused with, oh, well, that's just an unfortunate side effect of tra training from for a marathon. Like oh. I lost weight. Oh, I'm training for a marathon. I'm thirsty all the time. Oh, I'm running a lot. I'm hungry all the time. I'm running a lot. I'm exhausted all the time. I'm running a lot. So mm -hmm. like I, it never phased me. And I do think that like as th the amount that I was running, like extended how long it took me to get diagnosed. I would imagine. Yeah. Because when I think back, like June of 2020, my, my, my doctor noticed I had lost 15 pounds. Okay. She's like, did you change your diet? And I was like, no, I crushed a pint of ice cream last week, like in one sitting. And she's like, oh, well, has anything else changed? And I was like, I trained for and ran a marathon. And I'm getting ready to run another one. She's like, makes sense. And we moved on. Um, and then like, I was, you know, but January of 2020 was like the first time I was aware of being thirsty like before that, I was very much like one of those people. I I never carried a water bottle with me, but starting in January, I was like, I'm carrying a water bottle now because I just get thirsty now. Hmm. So it for as you long can look as back and see it coming. Oh yeah, and it's yeah. crazy because it's like uh, I and so I also didn't didn't realize how exhausted I was all the time because like it was such a slow onset for me that like until I started taking insulin and getting my blood sugar under control, it's like, Oh wait, this is what it feels like to have energy again. <laughs> mm. Right. So, um, and it was, it was a very hard transition for me once I realized what it meant long-term. Cause I was under the assumption of like, okay, I'm going to listen to this podcast and I'm going to do a lot of research and I'm going to have this under control right away. And then I'm going to go right back to my normal life. Okay. And now that I, ha now that I know what's going on and now that I have insulin, everything's going to be fine, but there's still the random bounce of like exhaustion. And there's still like just times where I can't focus at work and the threshold for where that starts is a lot lower now because I'm no longer used to running super high mm. on what, my blood sugar. What blood sugar do you get at when all that starts happening? Um, like 180. Yeah, that's where, 200, I, would, that's where like, I would guess. Yeah, I, I think you just, I mean, having watched my own blood sugar when um, when I wore a CGM last time, I would say that I, I could eat my way to 160 if I tried really hard. So, um, and then that's when you start getting that like feeling that I think people who don't have diabetes associate with like, oh, I ate too much or, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. I've had too many carbs, like that kind of weird. But it it really is. It's like a slowing, a fogging, like that kind of thing. And when it happens to you once in a great while, you you can write it off. But if if your blood sugar is bouncing around and that feeling is coming constantly, I, I would imagine it's just an unrelenting like water torture, right? Just a drip, drip, drip where you need to get away from it. So how do you, what have you been doing to try to avoid it? Um, well, I've been, I would love to say I've been trying to be better about my diet, but before diabetes, my, my go-to dinner was pasta. Mm -hmm. Um, my cats are named tortellini and macaroni and my friends have nicknamed my house, the castle of carbs. So like all of that is extra ironic now, <laughs> but um, yeah, I have my, I have my Dexcom alarm set at one thirty, and I, I don't let it, I don't let it go high. I, I, I am probably a little over, aggressive on correcting 
but I'm not, I'm more scared of, I'm not scared of the, the highs, but the, like what you say with the long-term effects. And I love your sandblasting analogy. It's like, I, I don't want to deal with that. This, I, this, the lows don't scare me. They probably should, but I've also not had very many terrible lows. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just, I, I, if it gets to 150, I'm correcting it. And because I just, I can't stand that feeling of the exhaustion. And it's really hard for me because my work is super understanding and I'll just, you know, I'll talk to my supervisor. I'll be like, I'm look, I'm not feeling great today. Yeah. I'm going to take a couple hours off. I'll make up the time later this evening and they're understanding about that, but it gives me anxiety because being completely honest and transparent six months before my diagnosis, if someone said, I can't do something right now, I'm exhausted. My blood sugars have been crazy all day. I would, I would be like, okay. And I would feel sympathetic, but I would also have that thought in the back of my head of like, mm, why don't I hire somebody okay. this doesn't happen to? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like it, I would, I would feel like that like they were like, are they using their diabetes as an excuse to not do something? Cause I, until it happened to me, I had no comprehension of how much I understand. Yeah. Like blood the, sugar can affect things. Yeah. Well, listen, I do think it's important, right. To, to realize like, I know that you deserve, I'm not saying any of this, right. Like I know that you deserve, um, you know, you're covered by the ADA, you know, it's a disability, like all that stuff. But I hear your greater point. Like that's not how you want to be thought of in the workplace and probably not how you want to feel personally and physically. So is the real, I mean, are we really saying you either need to get better at bolusing or change your diet? Yeah. I'm, I need to get better at pre bolusing because okay. I, even before diabetes, um, a poor habit that I've picked up from my bartending days was waiting until it was too, like, I'm super hungry to go eat. It's, I don't plan to eat. It's just like, Oh crap, it's two o'clock and I haven't eaten lunch and my stomach's growling. I need to go eat right now, but that doesn't work with diabetes. <laughs> like I need to have some sort of thought and I'm not like I'll bowl us and then I'll be like, all right. And it's been, it's definitely been enough time. I'm going to go eat now. And it's only been five minutes. Like that's not enough time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just, the other night Arden said that she thought Oreos would help her study at 11 o'clock. And I said, that's fine. Just pre bolus. And then like half an hour later, her blood sugar's going up. And I went and I was like, what happened? She goes, I pre bolus. I'm like, how long? I said, cause I, I, I'm thinking 20 minutes for an Oreo. And she goes, Oh, it wasn't that long. <laughs> I was like, I said, well, then you didn't really pre bolus And she's like, oh, okay. So, I mean, it really is a, like, Lee, I joked about it earlier, but, like, you got to, like, it's time to, like, be an adult. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, do stuff you don't want to do. Like, all, I got to be honest with you. If you had a baby right now next to you that was yours, uh, you would understand better what I was saying. Like, that idea of, like, you have to just, it, it's, um, I, I really don't like it when, like, like married people say like, oh, you'll understand when you're married or parents are like, you don't know until you have a baby. But there are some things you won't know until you have a baby, you know, like and the idea of just like this isn't what I want to do, but this is what I'm doing and I better do it and be happy about it or I'm going to ruin somebody's life um, is um, it's a strong, strong pull. And you're in that situation like you're going to you're going to you're ruining your life. Like you can feel it you're, is how you've described it. Like, you know, you're not feeling well, you're worried about your job, et cetera, et cetera. And, and the, the answer to, well, what can you do about that was I, I could pre bolus better. So pre bolus better, you know, and that's another strong motivator for me up until like maybe a year ago, I was very much offensive of like whether I'd ever have kids and then now that's definitely a possibility in my future. And I look at like the numbers that you need to have. Yeah. To you're going to need to pre if you preg want to be pregnant. Yeah. Sure. It's just like, oh man, this is yeah. a lot. It's super hard. And I, I do try. And then it's, for me, it's a lot of struggle between anxiety and motivation and, and, and just, it's a lot of work that I was not prepared for. And yeah, but now like that you try to streamline things. Well, now that you're aware of it, though, 
I mean, what's the plan? Like, do you have, have you thought it through? Like what you need yeah. to do to make a change, I guess. I have, and I, it's one of those situations where I know exactly what I need to do. I just need to do it. So like right now I'm at pre scene about 50% of the time. And when I was doing MDI and before I got CGM, I was being very good about my diet. Mm-hmm. But now that I have the pump and the Dexcom, I'm a little bit lazier about it because it's like, oh, well, it doesn't matter that it's 60 carbs. I can just bolus for it yeah, and, and figure it out later. And pasta is just so easy to cook and you don't have to worry about <laughs> keeping things fresh. <laughs> so i hate cooking too (laughs) i I got lazy but um my boyfriend's really sweet he he was like really really early on into us dating he wanted to learn more about diabetes and it's funny because i i went on a couple dates with him like four years ago before any of this and Mm -hmm. then when we met up again we went and I pulled out my, and I was like, Oh, fun fact. I'm diabetic now. That's a thing. <laughs> he was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it just happened. And, but he, he's been really supportive. He tries really hard to like when he cooks to be considerate of like how many carbs are in it. Good. But he also has a terrible sweet tooth. So he'll just, he'll have candy or sodas all the time. And I'll be like, Hey, maybe, maybe you shouldn't drink that much. He's like, no, it's fine. He's like, I'll just finish whatever you can't have. So we'll split desserts and I'll have two bites and he'll eat the rest of it. (laughs) Which is, I guess, sweet. I don't know. (laughs) I mean, it sounds opportunistic, but but I hear what you're saying. (laughs) But it it works out. But he, um, so we're getting back into a, like, I'm starting to get back into a habit of eating better and, um, yeah. Because I don't want to overwhelm myself. Like I have benchmark goals of like, all right, well, this month I'm going to try to make, you know, 50% of my meals lower carb meals and I'm going to, you know, try to pre bolus. So I like, I, I loosened up my ranges on my Dexcom Clarity and on the um, T Slim just to try to like, I don't know, incentivize me to do better with time and range. Mm -hmm. And then uh, over the the next six months, I plan to kind of like crank it down slowly. So it's not like I am going to stay between, you know, 70 and 120 starting tomorrow. I'm going to. It's a good plan. Slowly bring that down. That's a good plan. That's a good plan. I, it really is like shoot for a goal. Once you find yourself in that goal, tighten the range, keep shooting. And before you know it, you should be, in a place where you're not getting those spikes that are making you feel terrible. Um, And you're going to get there through pre-bolusing and actively watching your blood sugar after you bolus for a meal and not letting it get out of hand. And, you know, it'll become commonplace for you if you want it to be. If you want it to become commonplace and you take those steps, I think it will be. Yeah. Yeah, good for you. I'm excited about it. Good for you. I am. I'm happy to hear. It's getting better. Yeah. No, I mean, you're doing, listen, let's try to keep in mind it's November. You've had diabetes for like 10 months. Yes. Yeah. You're doing really well. You know so, that, right? Yeah, you I know do. That. I do. I know. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's don't been, doubt that. Yeah. So one, one thing I just want to tell you, cause I know it's going to drive you. You're going to think I'm crazy, but for, so diabetes awareness month, I've decided that cause I've gotten lazy on running too. Cause my marathon got canceled. Um, I'm running at least a mile every day this month. In a, in celebration of the awareness month. Yeah. So to, to I'm I also created a TikTok, which is really dumb because I don't understand TikTok. But <laughs> I was like, mm, this seems like a place that I can flood with videos of me running that no one will care about. Um. So I, I'm gonna do I'm, that for this. I'm month. currently <laughs> using TikTok incorrectly. <laughs> But I have <laughs> I have content coming for it. But at the moment, I'm not using it correctly. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm using it incorrectly too. But you know, <laughs> well, listen to use it, it correctly. Shot. To use it correctly means setting your camera up and dancing in front of it, which I will not be doing. Uh, so <laughs> I'm gonna uh, 
I think I have some content that'll work well on it. I'll be giving it a try. But uh, listen, is, I think, first of all, I want to thank you for coming on. You were really terrific. Um, <laughs> I appreciate you telling that story. Uh, I, I do think whether we're talking about Medtronic or anything, honestly, like anything to do with your health, I, I appreciate that you tried something, didn't work for you. You stuck to your guns, got it swapped out. There's a lot of accomplishment in there, really. Um, and just in general, like getting through being diagnosed with you know, during COVID and the the kind of like haphazard way that things began. I I, uh, I really appreciate you sharing this whole story with me today. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Did I you have a good time? I, yeah, I loved it. I was I've been looking forward to this for months. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. That's so nice to hear. And and you were good. You like you weren't nervous or not too bad. I didn't get nervous until like 10:59, and then I was like, oh my god, well, like right before it was going to start. Oh yeah, like <laughs> you're like this will be fine. Wait, maybe what? What if it isn't? <laughs> you start freaking out, and then you got on, and my audio wasn't set up right. I apologize. That was my fault. Um, but now we're good. I okay. should probably let the cat out. Yeah, let that cat out of the box that you stuck it in, or whatever you put. I'm sure you didn't do anything wrong to it, right? No, he's just in my bedroom. Okay, all right, that seems legal. Probably destroying something. Well, that's your problem. I gotta go. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> Leah, I have to. Right. I'm going to get my eyebrows. I'm going to get my eyebrows threaded. <laughs> that is a delight. That fact brings me a lot of joy. It all started because Arden gets her eyebrows threaded and I'm like her ride. And then uh, my family makes fun of me because they say my eyebrows look sad because they curl around my <laughs> eyes too much. And so I'm there one day and we're just, Arden and I are just messing around. I'm like, I'm going to, I'll do it too. Like, I'm just trying to be a good dad. You know what I mean? And so she's like, you're really going to try this? And I was like, I'll try it. And and I did. And it hurt really bad. And um, she got the one eye done. And I, I had a conscious thought. I was like, Maybe I'll just do the one eye <laughs> because, because it really hurt. But then I went back with Arden, I don't know, some weeks later. And the woman's like, again? And I went, yeah, all right. So I did it again. Hurt just as bad. Um, but I I have to admit, I looked in a mirror last night. I can't believe I'm saying this. And I thought, I have to get my eyebrows threaded. <laughs> and then I got home. Um and Arden goes, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? And I was like, what do you mean? She goes, like, after you're done with the podcast, what are you doing? And I said, I, you know, I'm going to edit some more podcasts. She goes, I got to get my eyebrows threaded. You want to go? And I, was like, and I went, oh, my God, yeah, I just realized I need to do that. And it was an embarrassing <laughs> moment for both of us, I think. Um, um, that's I what I'm that. doing now. Leah, I'm going to go get my eyebrows threaded. And by the way, people should know, way cheaper than waxing. Oh, Really? Now, I've never had my eyebrows waxed, but I am a person who has paid for it for other people. And uh, that's expensive. The threading's like five bucks. Maybe I'll have to try that. Let's be, it's a, yeah. There's this great Indian salon near us, and we go in there, and they just like, it's amazing. Like, I, I do think that we're maybe the only Caucasian people that go there. Um, because when we call ahead for an appointment, I'm like, hello. I'd like to make an appointment for she goes, Arden. And I'm like, am I the only white guy that calls this place? (laughs) (laughs) I I must be. I'm like, yes, Arden. Uh, House 330. (laughs) So uh, anyway, threading. That's my uh, that's my tip to all of you. All right. Well, you Uh, have fun. Um, Thanks for having me on. Have a good afternoon. Yeah, you too. A huge thank you to one of today's sponsors, Gvoke Glucagon. Find out more about Gvoke Hypopen at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. You spell that G V O K E G L U C A G O N dot com forward slash juice box. I'd also like to thank U.S. Med for sponsoring this episode and remind you to go to usmed.com forward slash juice box or call 888-721-1514. If you're enjoying the show, please tell someone else about it. And if you'd like to get even more support in the form of a really amazing Facebook community, Look for Juicebox Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes on Facebook. It's a private group with over 25,000 people in it. 
just like you. There's also a public page. It's called Juicebox Podcast Public Page if you just want to follow the podcast on Facebook. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juicebox Podcast.